We know, according to Obama's own Benghazi accountability report, that many of the weapons he supplied to Libyan rebels to topple Muammar Gaddafi have fallen into Al-Qaeda's hands. We know that these weapons found their way into the hands of the Al-Qaeda sister group Ansar al-Sharia. We know Ansar al-Sharia took responsibility for the attack on the Benghazi consulate, a fact Obama tried to cover up with a phony story about a quote, protest turned violent over an anti-Muslim video virtually no one had seen. As proof of this, an uncovered email was sent directly to the White House Situation Room two hours after the Benghazi consulate attack informing Obama the attack was perpetrated by Ansar al-Sharia. We also know Barack Obama was shipping Libyan weapons to al-Qaeda-linked rebels in Syria, using Benghazi as a base of operations, with Ambassador Chris Stevens as the middleman. But all this is child's play compared to what Obama may have had in the works in Syria. Obama, without congressional approval, toppled Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi, leaving the country in the hands of al-Qaeda. Now it looks like he wants to do the same thing in Syria with Bashar Assad. Obama named a quote, red line to be passed in order to send in NATO troops to topple Assad, that red line being Assad using chemical weapons on his own people. As first reported by Cyber War News, UK-based defense contractor giant, Britom, has had high-level emails and scores of documents hacked. The key document is an email between Britom director David Goulding and the company's founder, Philip Doherty. Quote, Phil, we have a new offer. It's about Syria again. Qataris propose an attractive deal and swear that the idea is approved by Washington. We'll have to deliver a CW, chemical weapon, to Homs, a Soviet origin G shell from Libya, similar to those that Assad should have. They want us to deploy our Ukrainian personnel that should speak Russian and make a video record. Frankly, I don't think it's a good idea, but the sums proposed are enormous. Your opinion? Kind regards, David. Along with this email, there is a huge cache of downloadable documents, including passports of the Ukrainian mercenaries whom it is presumed would be posing as the scapegoated Russians delivering the chemical weapons. Lo and behold, on January 15th, the leftist foreign policy magazine comes out with a quote-unquote exclusive article on a secret cable showing a side to use chemical weapons against his own people. Quote, an Obama administration official who reviewed the document, which was classified at the secret level, details its contents to the cable. We can't definitely say 100%, but Syrian contacts made a compelling case that Agent 15 was used in Homs on December 23rd, the official said. NATO, with Obama at the helm no doubt, will now more than likely move to topple Assad, leading to another Al-Qaeda-controlled country run by Islamic extremists. America, if this is true, if Obama was involved in the murder of Syrian civilians with chemical weapons, this would amount to war crimes. Impeachment would only be the beginning. My friends, do you remember the Syrian rebels overran and controlled a government base that had chemical weapons last summer. Even Leon Panetta admitted that chemical weapons may have fallen into their hands. This was last summer. I doubt that you remember this. I doubt that anybody remember. Even people who keep up with the news every day. I doubt that anybody remembers that. So I want to remind you. Syrian rebels, the same rebels that we're talking about today, overran and controlled a government base, a Bashar Assad base, admittedly, that had chemical weapons last summer. And even Leon Panetta admitted that chemical weapons may have fallen into the hands of the opposition last summer. Now, meanwhile, John Kerry and the regime and the media have used as their main argument the rebels have never had access to these chemical weapons. I mean, the idea that Basher didn't do this, and I'm not the first one to float it, nor are the people who sent me their thoughts on it, nor is 
Yosef Badansky the first. It's been talked about in Washington. Hasn't been a lot of news reported about it, but people have, you know, in, in, in dissecting events in Syria, people have posed the possibility in a, in a in a rhetorical way, and when they have, John Kerry and the Obama administration and the media have all used as their main argument that the rebels have never had access to the chemical weapons that the Syrian regime holds, and that's why I want to remind you of the news story last summer that Syrian rebels overran and controlled a government base that had chemical weapons last summer, and Panetta admitted that those weapons may have fallen into the hands of the rebels. And Kerry and the regime say that that didn't happen, that the U.S. government has kept track, which, folks, is simply not true. And furthermore, didn't didn't a lot of the same people who say that Congress now must back Obama to maintain U.S. credibility? Oh, yes. Congress must back the president. Must! Must! For the purposes of the credibility of the United States of America. Didn't a lot of the same people try to stop funding our troops while they were on the battlefield in Iraq and Afghanistan? Didn't some of these same people now demanding a united front actually engage in behavior that hampered the U.S. military effort, particularly in Iraq? John Kerry, two times. Vietnam and Iraq agrees that U.S. soldiers are reprobates, rapists, terrorists. And now all of a sudden they're angels. Here's a, you know, it's Foreign Policy Magazine, a flashback, Leon Panetta. We've lost track of some Syrian chemical weapons. September 28, 22. This is after Benghazi. Well, That's what Benghazi was all about in many ways. It was not last summer, it was last September. Foreign Policy Magazine, Panetta said, we have lost track of some Syrian chemical weapons. This is after Benghazi. So, take a break here, I'll give you some thinking on this notion that Basher is being framed, that he didn't do it. Sit tight. AP, just last week. AP sources say intelligence on weapons, no slam dunk. The intelligence linking Syrian President Bashar Assad to an alleged chemical weapons attack that killed at least 100 people is no slam dunk. Questions remain about who actually controls some of Syria's chemical weapons stores and doubts about whether Assad himself ordered the strike, U.S. intelligence officials say. That was August 29th. That's four days ago, folks. I don't know how many of you have seen those stories. You, in this audience, you're pretty informed. I imagine some of you have, have noted them and come across them. But I'm going to tell you, the conventional wisdom on television throughout the drive-by media is that Basher conducted the chemical weapons. The rebels don't have any. Basher did it. Basher crossed the red line. The Syrian regime is a bunch of reprobation. Obama said if you cross the red line, you're going to pay a price. They crossed the red line, and now Obama's going to make him pay a price. Now he wants Congress to join him in it. And the conventional wisdom is that it's Basher. It's a fait accompli, but I'm telling you, since last September, for anybody keeping track, wanting to remain open-minded about this, it's an open question whether the rebels got their hands on some chemical weapons. And then, while in the process of getting the heck kicked out of them, which Basher was doing, they launched chemical weapons on their own people, framing Basher. I'll tell you how this all started for me. On Saturday, I woke up, and it's almost habit now. I fire up the computer just to get my fix, news and stuff to start the day, and emails. I got a note from a friend of mine. And it, it was the first of two, turned out. These two guys don't know each other. 
And keep in mind that, that uh, well, not keep in mind, the things that this friend of mine is telling me, things about him I didn't know, but I believe to be true. Anyway, I, says that he spent a lot of time in the Middle East. His business, by the way, would have required that or certainly would have necessitated. He just never talked about it. Anyway, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but basically says he's, he's traveled around a lot over there and just doesn't believe that Basher would do this. There's nothing in it for him that he's not this kind of guy. I mean, this guy was almost a personal reference for Bashar Assad, which really had me scratching my head. I said, come on. You know, everybody wants to do my job. Everybody wants to influence what I say. And I set it aside, and I, I, uh, and I filed it away. Thought it interesting, but you know anybody can write me anything and say anything. I've got to be very careful. I just can't accept what somebody sends me in an email and run with it. So I ran the theory by a couple of people whose opinion on these things I've respected over the years, and they both nah 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 that nah, 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 that's a little crazy. And okay, so I said it aside. Then another one came in Saturday afternoon. And I set it aside. So, so powerful is the, is the idea. The media gets into this conventional wisdom mode and it starts pounding things, and it doesn't take long for everybody to start believing the story. And the story is that Basher used sarin gas, chemical weapons on his own people, even though it's John Kerry out there making the case. And then... Late last night, early this morning, I run across this piece by Yosef Badansky. And I look him up, find out who he is, just shared his resume with you. And his story, his article here is that there is evidence, mounting evidence, that the rebels in Syria did indeed frame Assad for the chemical attack. But not only that, that Obama, the regime, may have been complicit in it. Mounting evidence that the White House knew and possibly helped plan the Syrian chemical weapon attack by the opposition. So this is a double whammy. So then, I, wait a minute now. I just rejected these two emails from friends of mine, thinking, quite frankly, that it was quackery. And I said, wait a minute, now I've got to start thinking this seriously. My One of the learned people that in this field that I ran the theory by, who initially rejected it, is now rethinking the whole thing based on the Bedansky piece. And I don't... Look, I don't want to over-dramatize this. I'm just, with, with this administration, one thing I've learned, with the Democrat Party, the American leftists, their objectives are not always as stated, and, and, and they do lie. And they will lie to further their cause. And we know that as far as these people are concerned, everything is about Obama. It's not about the people of Syria. It's not about anything but Obama and the elimination of opposition and winning the House in 2014 because everything with these people is political. There's a growing volume of new evidence from numerous sources in the Middle East, mostly affiliated with the Syrian opposition and its sponsors and supporters, which makes a very strong case based on solid circumstantial evidence that the August 21st, 2013 chemical strike in the Damascus suburbs was indeed a premeditated provocation by the Syrian opposition. The extent of U.S. foreknowledge of this provocation needs further investigation because available data puts the horror of the Barack Obama White House in a different and disturbing light. This guy is not a kook, folks. He's not a nut. He's not an internet looney tune. The guy writing this, Yosef Badunsky. 
In fact, in reading further about this guy, Yosef Badonsky argued that the deception playing out right now in Syria is a deception similar to one used in Sarajevo in 1995 to provoke airstrikes against the Serbs for the benefit of the Bosnian Muslims. Now, if this is right, and I say IF in capital letters, if this is right, this is the setup of all time. And it looks like, you read this thing prints out to four pages. And I'm sure Coco and the boys have found it and getting ready to put a link to it at RushLimbaugh.com. Defense and Foreign Affairs. If they don't have it, I'll send them the link. At any rate, it looks like there was U.S. intel involvement dating a week before the alleged chemical weapons attack in meetings that were anticipating a war-changing event. So we could be looking here at, at, a, at a frame job. Pretty big setup. The extent of U.S. foreknowledge of this provocation needs further investigation because available data puts the horror of the regime in a different and disturbing light. The way that's written, what it means is Obama's describing what happened in Syria as a horror. And it's something we, as a freedom-loving, decent, good-hearted people, cannot tolerate. It's a horror. Well, what Mr. Badansky is saying is that available data puts the horror in a different and disturbing light, meaning it's not Basher doing the horrible things. It's the rebels nerve-gassing themselves framing Basher, setting him up so as to engineer a response that takes Basher out so that the Al-Qaeda guys win and then we end up on the side of Al-Qaeda. And you've heard that being speculated about. On August 13 and 14, 2013, Western-sponsored opposition forces in Turkey started advanced preparations for a major and irregular military surge. Initial meetings between senior opposition, military commanders, and representatives of uh, Qatari, Turkish, and U.S. intelligence took place at the converted Turkish military garrison in Hatay province, used as the command center and headquarters of the Free Syrian Army, the FSA, and their foreign sponsors. Very senior opposition commanders who had arrived from Istanbul briefed the regional commanders of an imminent escalation in the fighting due to a war-changing event or development, which would in turn lead to a U.S.-led bombing of Syria. The opposition forces, the rebels in Syria, had to quickly prepare their forces for exploiting the U.S.-led bombing in order to march on Damascus and topple the Bashir government. The Qatari and Turkish intelligence officials assured the Syrian regional commanders that they would be provided with plenty of weapons for the coming offensive. What this guy is saying is that representatives of the Syrian rebels met with uh, simpatico groups in Turkey and planned a joint move against Bashir after a U.S.-led attack on him, which would follow what these people were determining or calling a very uh, a war-changing development. Now, that would be the nerve-gassing of their own people. Now, again, it remains a big if, but if, look at, Look at the world right now. Look at this country. If indeed this is a frame job, look at how well it's being run. I mean, everybody thinks that Basher did it, and everybody thinks Obama's got to do something, and everybody thinks Congress has got to join Obama in doing so, and everybody thinks the United States has got to do so. We've got to go in there. We've got to save the Syrian people. This Basher guy is an absolute reprobate. He's no different than Saddam. He's nerve-gassing his own people. And it, 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 it quickly, that, that whole narrative 
that whole template quickly came to life. It has all the energy in the world behind it. Now, just so you know, the, the, the two emails I got from my friends who you know, get anecdotal, I'm not attaching any weight in this to what they have said. It just, to me, it's coincidental. On Saturday, I got these two notes from friends of mine who've done business in the Middle East in Syria. Just do not think this, that they know Assad. They can't not believe that he would do this. He, he's not that kind of guy, number one. They said, number two, there's nothing in it for him. And nothing in it for him. He was already cleaning their clocks with conventional opposition tactics to a rebel civil war force. He was already cleaning their clocks so badly the U.S. had to get involved to even it up because Basher was winning so good. What in the world did he need to do this for? And there's a, he doesn't rush out. Now, both, both my friends distrust Obama as... You know, Tremendously. So I must put that in there. So it was out of the clear blue I run into Yosef Badonsky and his piece, which four pages of what he says, growing volume of new evidence, numerous sources in the Middle East. Not only did the Syrian rebels use the nerve gas on their own people in frame basher, but that we knew and possibly helped plan it. Now that's going to make people, why, why would we, why do we want to get rid of Basher? I mean, he's, uh, Kerry, Hillary, Obama have all called him a great reformer. What could this possibly be about? I take a break. I just noticed the